Hey guys, Mtashed here, and today I wanted to talk about raiding and getting raid ready. Now I've raided in a lot of games. Ruinscape, Final Fantasy, Realm Reborn, I'm a, I'm a Dragoon main, okay? I've raided a ton in Destiny and got in the top four or five teams in the world on the first day of a raid, so I've got a lot of experience. But there's one thing I want to talk about today that doesn't take that much effort and will change your life, especially if your whole team does it. And that is options. Options is the most important thing you can consider when going into a brand new raid. Because you don't know what is in each room. And I'm going to give you some examples and why you might be able to counter them in this video. Each room is most likely going to be different. And each mechanic involved is going to be different. And the enemy patterns involved are going to be different. And so one build might struggle in one of the rooms, or four of the rooms, or all of the rooms, depending on what you do. If you only have an SMG build, uh, where you're running around with a, with a vector, right? This is a great little build for PvP. Even if you adjust some stuff and make it a, a PvE build, fantastic. But what if there's a sniper in the roof? What if there's... 20 snipers in the rafters, and this is the loadout you're using. You're probably going to have a big, big shitty time, right? So you might want a rifle build, a long-range build to deal with some of these enemies. Maybe you want something more generalized, and you want to use uh, an assault rifle, which is missing for some reason, and an LMG. But options is the thing I wanted to discuss today because there might be rooms where your build is terrible. And so there's a couple things I want you to do. I want you to look for four weapons. You could go for the fifth, but there's four weapons specifically that I want you to get. I want you to get a high impact sniper. There's the M4 you can go with, there's the, uh, the Model 700, but I want you to go with a high damage sniper to deal with enemies at a distance if you need, or to burst down a named enemy as a team on spawn and things like that. But this brings a lot of utility to the game. I then want you to get an LMG. I want you to get a high damage LMG because the sustained fire of these can be very helpful in many situations, especially if multiple enemies are spawning in, such as shotgun rushers. In one of the first incursions, there was a door and like four shotgunners came out and everyone would wipe on that damn door. Because you'd kill the first couple, you'd have to reload, and they'd just burst you all down. Having 100 bullets in the mag, or more, is going to be very valuable, and it's going to allow you to deal with some of these crazy spawning situations. And I want you to get an LMG, okay? The next one, I want you to get an assault rifle. The reason I want you to get an assault rifle is because of the range and versatility of them. I think that assault rifles, health damage is one of the worst stats in the game. Because most enemies have the majority of armor. But the base damage to RPM to mag size makes assault rifles pretty valuable. And they're overall a decent weapon. So I want you to find at least one. You don't have to use it. You don't have to use it. But just have one in your back pocket just in case. Okay? I want you to get a rifle. I want you to get a, a MK-17 probably. That's probably my favorite pick. With a high base damage. Because a rifle is kind of the in-between the assault rifle and the sniper. It can deal with some of those long-range targets, but you can also burst someone down if they get close. And if you really want the trifecta, look for an uh, SMG. Now, there's multiple types of SMGs out there. I don't know what the meta is and what the best one is for you, but look for an SMG. This song is really epic for this. Like, chill out. <laughs> chill out! Okay? But the big ones are rifle, assault rifle, um, LMG, and a sniper. Those are the four I really care about. SMGs are fine, but these are the, the four I really care about. Now, the reason I say that is because while in combat, you can switch these out anytime you want. Someone can be shooting you. Someone can be doing damage to you. Someone can be almost killing you, and you can swap your weapon. And so if you're dealing with multiple tanky enemies, and let's say they crank up the level of these enemies to 33 or 34 in the raid, there's a very good chance ammo will become an issue in some engagements. 
and running around with your sidearm, probably not a good option, right? And so I want you to have multiple weapons in your back pocket that you can swap to very quickly in case you need to continue that sustained DPS and finish off a boss. I want you to have this option in your back pocket because if you don't have it, you're going to regret it because you might be the guy that can't deal with the snipers in the roof and no one else on your team can deal with them. And that easy, easy fix, killing those snipers on the roof would have fixed everything. It would have been an easy, easy raid for you. But no one has a good sniper to deal with it. No one has a good build to deal with it. And you're left dealing with this terrible mechanic over and over again. Now, I know that sounds far-fetched, but I have a good example of that. In Destiny 1, in the first raid, there was a room with these things called oracles. And they spawned pretty far away. And one of the best tactics for it was using a sniper called the Icebreaker. Now, the Icebreaker continued to regen ammo, and so you're able to take out these oracles that you had to blow up or else you died, but you could take them out from a distance, and you wouldn't have to deal with a lot of the enemies, and it never ran out of ammo. And that's amazing. But if you didn't have that, you were stuck trying to shoot these things all the way across the map, and it was pretty much impossible if you didn't have a scout rifle or something long range. Most people didn't use them. They used auto rifles and hand cannons, and... A lot of us were cucked in this room because we're like, oh my, we can't deal with this. We can't kill these things in time. And it made that room so much harder than it needed to be. In the second Destiny raid, one of the biggest mechanics for killing the final boss was a huge burst of damage. And there was one weapon that was so good at it that people would not raid with you if you didn't have that weapon. They would say, do you have a Gallahorn? Oh, you don't have it? Oh, then you can't raid with us. It was that bad. Now, I pray that that doesn't happen here. But having these tools at your disposal will allow you to deal with any situation that might arise. If your class in Final Fantasy is terrible, well, you probably can't just swap to another one. But you can swap to a different class of weapon in the Division. Same with your skills. Maybe the Revive Hive doesn't work in the raid. I'm guessing it will, but in the Dark Zone it doesn't. Maybe they apply that to the raid. Maybe the Revive Hive is terrible and this is the only skill you have unlocked. Maybe you know where all the enemies are spawning and you can throw down a flame turret. Give yourself these tools now, before the raid happens, so that you're not panicking and having to leave and try to farm to deal with some of these difficult rooms. The other big one, I guess, would just be, you know, get a build that's somewhat versatile. For example, I've got Wyvern Wear because the set bonus, you know, it's critical hit damage and critical hit chance, but I can trade out my chest piece at any time. If I want to use my rifle for the next room, uh, I've got options where I can use my rifle, right? I've got different, different chest pieces for different situations. Uh, I even got an SMG one if I really needed. So that's kind of my main tip. The versatility is going to be your biggest tool. Picking a class that's going to help you, that's awesome as well. And, um... I, I don't think there's much more to say. Getting your gear score up, getting a good build, getting some good items, that's going to happen naturally, right? And and optimizing your build for an extra percentage or two of damage here and there is obviously going to help. But having options is going to be the biggest help. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.